welcome back to Sunday School. I'm Miss Julie. I'm going to start this lesson with a very important question. And that question is, what is faith? Faith is something you've probably heard of before, and you may know that's important, but it's a bit hard to really explain exactly what it is. The Bible, thankfully, does give us a good definition of it in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. There it says, Now faith is the confidence in what we hope for and assurance of things that we do not see. So why is it important for Christians to have faith? Well, we don't always see God's promises come true right away. But if we have faith, that means we'll keep believing in these promises and keep staying close to God throughout our lives, even when the going gets a little bit tough. It also means that we will see his promises come true eventually, especially the promise of eternal life with him. I have just a few other questions for you to consider about faith. Can you think of a time in your life when you really needed to have faith? When you were a little bit like this man at the um, start of a maze and you couldn't really see the end, but you had to believe that you would get to the end eventually. Now, when you had faith, did you put your faith in some person, some circumstances, or did you put your faith in God? Do you ever think that it's hard to have faith in God? Hmm. And finally, what does faith have to do with a red cord? I bet you weren't expecting that last question. <laughs> well, over the next few weeks, we're going to be talking about people in the Bible who showed a lot of faith. And we can learn a lot about what faith means and how to live in faith through these stories. So let me explain this red cord thing. It's all about a woman named Rahab. So I'd like you to open your Bible to Joshua chapter 2. At this time, God's people, the Israelites, had been freed from slavery in Egypt. And God used his awesome power to set them free. But then their faith in God got pretty weak and they ended up just roaming around the desert for 40 years. Finally, after those 40 years, it was time for them to go to the land God had promised them to see God's promises come true. But they had to defeat the king who was already there, particularly the king of Jericho. You also need to know that Joshua was the leader of God's people, the Israelites at this time. And this is where our story begins. So I'm gonna be reading a good chunk of Joshua chapter two, and I bet you can follow along. Then Joshua, son of Nun, secretly sent two spies from Shittim. Go look over the land, he said, especially Jericho. So they went and entered the house of a prostitute named Rahab and stayed there. Now, you got to know that a prostitute earns her living by doing sinful things. So Rahab definitely did not have a very good reputation here. The king of Jericho was told, Look, some of those Israelites have come here tonight to spy out the land. So the king of Jericho sent his, this message to Rahab. Bring out the men who came to you and entered your house, because they have come to spy out our whole land. But the woman who had taken the two men and hidden them, and she said, Yes, these men came to me, but I do not know where they were from. At dusk, when it was time to close the city gate, they left. I don't know which way they went. Go after them quickly and you may catch up with them. But she had taken them up to the roof and hidden them under stalks of flax that she had laid out there. So the men set out in pursuit of the spies on the road that leads to the fords of the Jordan. And as soon as the pursuers had gone, the gate was shut. Before the spies lay down for the night, she went up to the roof and said to them, I know that the Lord has given you this land and that a great fear of you has fallen on us, so that all who live in this country are melting in fear because of you. We have heard how the Lord dried up the waters of the Red Sea 
for you when you came out of Egypt. And what you did to Shehan and Og, the two king of the Amorites east of the Jordan, whom you completely destroyed. When we heard of it, our hearts melted in fear and everybody's courage failed because of you. For the Lord your God is God in heaven above and on earth below. Now then, please swear to me by the Lord that you will show kindness to my family because I have shown kindness to you. Give me a sure sign that you will spare the lives of my father and mother, my brothers and sisters, and all who belong to them, and that you will save us from death. Our lives for your lives, the men assured her. If you don't tell what we are doing, we will treat you kindly and faithfully when the Lord gives us this land. So she let them down through, by a rope through the window, for the house she lived in was part of the city wall. And she said to them, Go to the hills so that your pursuers will not find you. Hide yourselves there for three days until they return, and then go on your way. Now the men said to her, This oath that you made us swear will not be binding on us, unless when we enter the land, you have tied the scarlet cord in the window through which you let us down. And unless you have brought your father and mother, your brothers and all your family into your house. If any of you go outside of your house into the street, their blood will not be on our heads, for we will not be responsible. As for those who are in the house with you, their blood will be on our head if a hand is laid on them. But if you tell us what you are doing, if you tell what we are doing, we will be released from the oath you made us swear. Agreed, she replied. Let it be as you said. So she sent them away and they departed, and she tied the scarlet cord to her window. Okay. So in this story, we see a woman who is a bit complicated. She does sinful things for a living but we see that she has great faith in God. She has heard all the awesome and a little bit frightening things that their God has done, that God saved them from Egypt, that he made them defeat their enemies. And she believes in this God. In fact, she says, your God, now it's not a God that she grew up with, your God is God of heaven and earth. Wow. So she has great faith. She hasn't seen these things, but she has believed anyway. And she also has faith that God and God's people will be able to save her and her family. That's why she kind of makes this deal with them. She knows that they have the power to save her, just like she helped them. So what do you think happened when the Israelites' army actually did invade the city of Jericho? Do you think that God's people and God kept their promise to Rahab? <laughs> yes, they did. Rahab had tied that red cord to her window, and indeed, all of her family that were in her house got out safely. So let's go back to Hebrews for just a second. That is the book in the Bible that was written hundreds of, actually hundreds of years after what happened with Rahab and the Israelites. But the writer of Hebrews still remembered her story. He actually writes, By faith, the prostitute Rahab, because she welcomed the spies, was not killed with those who were disobedient. Now, you almost certainly will not have be in the same position as Rahab was. But I'd like to challenge you to think how you can show your faith in God this week. You could think of little things that you can do, or even maybe some big things. And when we see each other again, I'm going to ask you what you did. So I hope you have a great week, and I will see you very soon. Mm -hmm.